Welcome to the boating adventure. If I had a boat and oceans to cross, then I would sail them. Since I have this promise to keep. It's Sunday the 17th of April 2022. And for all those who celebrate it, it is Easter Sunday. And welcome to the cabin of the Swamp Duck. I've come over to the boat today to do a few jobs in preparation for the engine's return, hopefully on Tuesday. And also that once the engine has been installed, we can then take the Swamp Duck out on a few more adventures. But before we can do what we've planned, there are a few modifications that I need to make to the boat. The first one is to do with the anchor and the anchor chain. Where we intend to go, the requirement is that you should have 60 foot of anchor chain. So I have bought some new anchor chain in this small box, which absolutely <laughs> weighs a ton. <laughs> So there are 15 metres of anchor chain in this box. So if I add that to the anchor chain that I already have, that gives me about 69 foot of anchor chain, which is plenty. And this is real heavy duty um, anchor chain. I bought it from a, a marina, so it's the right stuff. It's galvanised and uh, it's this close link stuff. I had to get some shackles and a friend of mine gave me some of these shackles so I can join the old anchor chain to the new anchor chain and make a really good length of chain. But uh, of course, before I do any of that, I've got some tea on the go. Cheers. This is currently how the anchor chain is connected to the boat so that it's attached to a rope which has been slightly spliced and um, a plastic tie so I intend to change that and have a proper shackle on the other end and anchor it correctly uh, to the front of the boat here just behind this board so that it's firm so I now have the anchor ready to deploy quite quickly just hung it on a little hook there on the pulpit rail so it can be lifted off and put into the water. Now that took a bit of doing but I've managed to get uh, 69 foot of chain tucked behind that front board there. So when the chain comes in it just simply just uh, goes behind that board and stays there hopefully. It's one of those things you have to have that, and hope that you never really need to use it. So that's the first task of uh, trying to get the uh, Swamp Duck ready for some more adventurous waters. So 60 foot of uh, chain, at least a 69 foot of chain, that must indicate that we're going to go somewhere a little bit deeper than the Ashby Canal. My next job to make the uh, changes that I, I need to make so that I can take the Swamp Duck onto a little bit more challenging waterways is I need to install one of these. So this is a anchor light and uh, serves as a another navigation light. So this is going to go in the middle of the windscreen and it's on a, on a bracket so it should be able to be seen from the back of the boat and the front of the boat. So this serves as a, an additional navigation light. When you're on the rivers then the tunnel light at the front of the boat doesn't really count as a navigation light. If you're going to be uh, at anchor at all you do need an anchor light and you also uh, may need this if you are um, coming up a, a river and it's getting a little bit uh, dark then you need to, to have 
the navigation light. So you've got your your port and your starboard lights, and then you have this one as a centre light, which can be seen from the front and the back. So I'm hoping that this will be high enough for it to be seen all round. And it's on a bracket, so that when we're back on the canals, we can uh, tilt it down and it won't get caught up on a tunnel. <laughs> so I've got to install this. It requires some wiring and, uh, and a switch and uh, a fuse. So that's going to be my little task now this afternoon to get this done. So that should be about in the right place. I've just drilled one pilot hole. So I've just got the other one to do. I have strengthened that uh, middle bar on the window there to make sure it could uh, support the weight of that. Now in terms of wiring this in, I think I can put a little bit of extension wire on that and I can feed it down there in between the window pane. There's a little gap there, I could just probably squash it in there and bring it around here, past the, the dead bee, and then <laughs> there's a little gap here that I can feed the wire into and then it will come out underneath the console and there are a couple of spares holes here that uh, things that I took out when I first bought the boat and there's room there for the little switch that I've bought so that will go in there. In terms of wiring I usually buy my wire from uh, Halfords it's just easy to get a hold of um, it's not necessarily the cheapest but it's more convenient than having to wait for it so this is 5 amp red and 5 amp black and that will do the job. What I had to do in the end was to drill a little hole there in the console inside there and then I can run the wire up. So I just feed that through there and go through. And then it should pull out at the top here like so and I've got my two wires. Brilliant. I can just strip the ends of these. So make sure we get live to live. There's no power in this so it doesn't really worry me too much. The next job is to remove one of these blanks so that I can use the hole for a switch. Again, this is the switch, another bit from Halfords. I've used quite a few of these. So that goes on there. And then the little nut goes on top. Oops, quite fiddly. And that just secures that in place. Now I'm going to take one of the wires, I'm going to take the positive wire, and I'm going to uh, take that to the switch. But I'm going to put a fuse in between, just in case. So I'm going to use a 5 amp fuse.
No, it doesn't really matter which of these I use, to be honest. But that's going to be connected to a positive, but I'm going to put a fuse in between. So I've got one of these little black fuses, fuse containers here. You just have a little 5 amp fuse in there. So that's going to go in. I've already got the male and female here, so I need to make sure I do the right thing. It doesn't really matter which way round it goes, but obviously that needs a female on there. Crimp it. Make sure it's nice and firm. Then that will fit onto the other end of this little fuse circuit here. So that fits in there. So that's now fused. So that has a fuse. So if there's any problems, that fuse will go first. It's nothing too complicated about this wiring on the boat, it's just schoolboy electrics really to be honest. Just making sure you follow it, follow the course properly, put fuses in, make sure you've attached things properly. Good firm crimping thing here, it's an excellent piece of kit. Don't try and do it with a pair of scissors. The little switch here is in the off position, so that should mean that there won't be any light. Just check. The, the light is off. Fingers crossed. Just put the switch up. And the light is on. Brilliant. So that gives me a nice bright white navigation light which you can see from the front and the back. Good. So that's the anchor done and then that's the uh, anchor light and the navigation light there. So the next job is to install a VHF radio and to do the course that goes with it. Uh, one small addition I've made to the controls of the boat is to buy a little uh, meter here which tells me the temperature and it also tells me the voltage of the batteries. So well, that's quite a handy little device. It's now Tuesday the 19th of April 2022 and as you can see I now have an engine on the back of the Swamp Duck. The River Canal Rescue came this morning to fit it. Had a few dramas. Um, if we can just show you what they've done now. We now have this steering rod which goes through the tilt mechanism. It comes out that side and it's joined onto this arm here. The problem was there wasn't quite enough room in this engine compartment for the rod to give um, sufficient turn on the engine. So the solution <laughs> was to create a hole in the side here so that the rod can go through. Now that just needs um, smartening up, tidying up. I was going to put maybe a little frame around it and I'm going to enclose it with some rubber to keep it uh, waterproof. I might just tidy it up with some fiberglass but that makes a, a neat solution to that and it gives us a really good turn on the engine. 
the engine is running fine and with the new cables it certainly is um, working a lot smoother it all seems very secure so after much ado I'm quite happy with that that's been a good solution Steve bless him has repainted the engine cover so that's all smart it's all been done in the one color so it matches the canopy so that can go on the back so a few little jobs of um, tidying up that engine bay and the job is a good one we can now start preparing for our five day trip which will take us to the beginning of our new adventures that's all depending upon whether the Atherston flight is open uh, on Sunday this week there was a bit of a problem with one of the paddles and the whole of the flight had to be closed so we're hoping that we can start moving the boat uh, by a week on Wednesday but if the Atherston flight isn't available to us then we have to go a much longer route round and that will probably take us 10 days so it mean that we have to start a little bit earlier we're not going to film the journey if we go through the Atherston uh, route because we've done that already but there is a little video that we do want to make one of the subscribers asked us some time ago if we would make this uh, video for him and for others and that will be the first opportunity that we've had to do it so that's the only filming we will be doing but hopefully once we get to the start of our new adventures there will be lots more videos to come
I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel then please press the subscription button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen which is displayed on a mobile phone or a tablet throughout the video. Please press the bell icon on the home page of the channel and you'll be notified by YouTube each time we upload a new video. Please give us a thumbs up and make any comments below as I do enjoy reading them and I will respond to each and every one of them. So thank you very much for watching and do take care. I'm putting on a show.